But good morning, good morning, men of God. As we wrap up this year here on the National Men's Prayer Call, we're so grateful and thankful for you being able to share, join us on this National Men's Prayer Call each and every Tuesday and Thursday morning. We never take it for granted. We're really grateful. And we're just so grateful that God has blessed us uh, tremendously. Going 11 years here, the National Men's Prayer Call. Who would have thought this would continue? But we, we're grateful because this is God's platform. And thank God for the leadership of Dr. Kenneth Green that God poured into his spirit to start this here ministry. So we just thank God for this outstanding man of God in his own right, as First Lady Green as well, that stands beside him. Uh, men of God, we're going to just uh, go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and open us up in prayer. We're just going to reflect back on things, what God has done uh, over this year, year uh, here at the National Men's Prayer Call. And so let's just go before God here in prayer. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Lord, we come to you this morning to say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, first of all, Lord, because this day wasn't promised to us, December the 28th. 2023 but you made it possible you made it possible for one reason and that's just to serve you to honor you and to magnify your holy name the bible speaks on you as being king of kings the bible says you're lord of lords the bible says you're the shepherd the bible says you're the morning star the bible even says that you are the lion of the tribe of judah so we thank you for that all the affirmation of who you are this morning we want to just say thank you we want to say thank you as we wrap up this year so many things that have taken place through this year, Lord, but you've saw, made it possible for us to witness this year. So we want to say thank you for it, Lord. And we're going to just say thank you in advance for a blessed and a prosperous 2024 year, Lord, each and every person that's represented on this call, Lord. We thank you right now for them. Blessing their household, Lord, meeting every need according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Pray that there's no lack. We thank you for that. Thank you also for complete healing in each and every man's body from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. We bind any attack that the enemy may try to come against us. The Bible says there's no weapon formed against us will prosper. So we thank you for that. And Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord, for blessing us, Lord, with our helpmate. We're grateful for our helpmate because the word of God says a house can't stand if it's divided and two cannot be together except they agree on the word. It's the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So we thank you for that. Thank you for blessing us, Lord, with our offspring. We pray for our offspring, Father, for blessing them, watching over them while they're out on this Christmas break. We just thank you for the faculty also, Lord. Just watch over them and keep them safe. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, that we can honor you in all that we do, Lord, because we trust you, Lord, because that's what your word says for us to be able to do, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we just continue on to praise you, Lord, and magnify your holy name because you're so good to us. And we want to say thank you for that. Father, we pray for those that need a prayer. Father, we just ask you to continue to lift up and pray for the Tolbert family. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you continue to give them the strength, the comfort that they need during this time, Lord. Only you can provide. And we just say thank you for Brother Anthony Tolbert and his entire family. And Father, I just thank you right now for my friend, Miss Joanne Edwards, Lord. Just continue to pray for her, Lord. Allow her to continue to get stronger and stronger, Lord. We know that the enemy is trying to attack her, but the devil is alive and Jesus is the Messiah. Just pray for also one of my co-workers, Mary Ann Douglas. Just pray for her. Lord, just pray for her rehabilitation, Lord, that she's getting stronger. And Lord, just be, get her back on her feet, Lord. Only you can. Oh, Lord, I thank you right now for being with her, Lord. And Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the glory for what you're doing, for what you've already done. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Dr. Raphael? Yes, sir. Well, gentlemen... Joe. Oh, oh, okay, great. <laughs> Gentlemen, what we've decided to do as we get ready to conclude the year and we get ready to uh, take all the momentum that we've uh, experienced throughout this year and roll it into uh, next year, what we wanted to do is see if uh, there was some standout um, 
message that was so impactful to you that it just stuck out, you know, so it was going to give everybody an opportunity to just kind of comment on that. And not that, you know, um, that it has to be so pointed in that area, but what's your takeaways for this year? What was the one thing that if God had to highlight in your book of life that you you took those copious notes? You know, sometimes, John and Mac, you take the notes and then there was something that stuck out. You highlighted them and you went back into them. And in this, um, and in this space, what would you love to share? Is there something that, that uh, st sticks out for any of us? So the floor is open. You know, we would love to um, hear your comments on that. So it might just be a nugget that you have um, that you that stuck with you that we'd love to re kind of re uh, re talk about. Benny, I know you look like you can turn that video on. Now you ready? Talk to me. <laughs> no, I just realized I didn't have the the video on. Um, but uh, no, you know, I don't know if there was one particular moment. I think uh, just the uh, the theme of of what we're trying to do the um, focus of what this ministry is doing and how this ministry wants to serve others uh, and that's through personal uh, development and um, just leadership training and the focus on that uh, and and just a consistent emphasis on that it, to me is what's blessing me because as I, uh, as I move around the country, my, most of my social circles are, are, the majority is made up of Christians. And, and I can tell you in the kingdom and in, in, in outside of the kingdom, in spite mm -hmm. of all of these leaders that are out there, because leadership is a new buzzword, there is a void of leadership for men in, within the kingdom. Um, and I think that we, uh, have decided we're going to focus our, um, energy on that. Uh, make that our agenda is to provide leadership in that space. And that's something I'm awfully proud of. And, and I get blessed every month uh, with various different subjects, with all the different speakers, all of the men that are on this call, you guys uh, bless me. And particularly this month uh, it's been, you know, uh, really great. Um, but, but for me, the consistency on, focusing on leadership and personal development, Sederic is what's uh, really blessing me because again, there is a void within the kingdom. As I speak to different various pastors uh, and and we talk about, and I, and I talk about the, the National Men's Prayer Call and really what our agenda is, is to provide that void and to be the core engineers in the kingdom uh, to, put, to help you know, put the personal development blueprint in front of as many men as possible. And everybody agrees and they say the same thing, man, that's really needed. And that's really what sticks out to me is that so many men agree that this type of personal development uh, outside of church, you know, how do you make it work? How do you make your life work based on what you get on Sunday and Wednesdays or whatever your uh, uh, anointed time periods are? How do you make your life work applying these principles uh, to make your life more effective? Um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and the fact that there is such a need, there's not the high, it's not the highest agenda. And so, which is what always uh, uh, surprises me. So that, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, but that's, that's I'll, it. For I'll jump back in. So gentlemen, I want you to prepare yourself. I want to be like that teacher, you know, I'm coming around the room. So I don't want nobody to be shy in this space. And again, what we're talking about is just the the, the standout moments throughout this year that maybe that um, that impacted you. I, I'll start off a little bit. And one of the things that I think that I get from the group, I don't know if it's necessarily a, a certain topic, but uh, for me, I think it's the willingness. You know, I think willingness has to be um, one of the things that we embrace to get receive a word. You know, it is, it's a very interesting dynamic. You know, when, when God tells you that I'll never leave you or forsake you, right? But then on the other side of it, he'll say, well, you draw near to me, then I'll draw near to you. Well, you know, that, that seems to be a contradiction in there, Dr. Dan. He's like, I, I'll never leave you or forsake you, but when you ready, uh, draw near to me, then I'll draw near to you. In that willingness to be able to receive instructions, right? The critique of what I'm not doing right. And sometimes when you're not ready to listen, you will get it. 
And so with no wasted breaths, and even though the love is there, until I am willing to receive a word from my brothers, until I get the instructions from Devin, or I feel the, you know, the correction from uh, Dr. Mack in, in the words in, that are inspired by the Holy Spirit, then um, it won't fall on that, that fresh ground. You know, that seed will, you, you know, won't, won't flourish into the fruit that it's supposed to. So uh, for me, willingness is... Um, a, a space that I try to posture myself to receive a word because every Tuesday and Thursday, the spirit is talking, but it just depends on if I'm willing to receive it. So that's the thing. There's so many things that I know that, that um, as I evolve into the image of Christ, that I got to get right, right? I'm not perfect. I'm not doing this. I'm, you know, trying to be that, that, that blueprint, Benny. If I'm unwilling to, to receive the correction and I think I got it right and I'm looking around, I don't see the, the, the success that it should come with, right? At the end of the day, I should be representing the fact that my life works. And so how can I be a good testimony? I'm robbing myself of testimony if I'm not willing to do it. I'm looking to become the best iteration of myself. And so I'm willing to go through it and willing to change, I think most importantly. So again, I'm I'm getting ready. I'm about to go to the, you know, the big dog, uh, Dr. Dent. I'm gonna bring you up to the front of the class, sir. I need full attention. I see you got your headphones on. Give me a good word. You're still on mute, Doc. Um, I like I like to go to the fact that one of the day back in June 6, um, 20, um, when um Benny was talking about the loop. Um I, I made it, I made it. You know, because, you know, like like Dr. Max said, we should keep these copious notes. And I remember calling Benny after this was over with and I put the loop. He's talking about visionaries. Where are we going? How do we create this loop? And I put vision in the center and I put maturity, decisiveness, consistency and strength. And I drew my arrows around it and I had vision in the, in the core of this. And so and I was looking at you know, it's, where's the vision? Where are we going? And is it crystal clear exactly where we're going? So I, I put this loop in the mental health capacity and I talk about, you know, am I mature mentally? And what is, what is maturity to look like for me mentally? You know, what is maturity to look like for me, said Derek, emotionally? What does maturity look like for me financially? And then going through these, I create these eight circles about and I put the loop and said, what does maturity look like for me in my career? Because some people like, then you look at your relationship. Is it maturing? Is it evolving to be exactly what? So I, when Benny did this loop, I just say, okay, I, I got this and I got it. So I got multiple notes and multiple screens, but I want to give you another one you gave, Sidere, back in January about culture. And so I, I learned that you got to create the culture or the culture happened by default. And when the culture happened by default, it's not going to be what you want. And so in that loop, so I'll just combine these things together and talk about creating that culture where men can come into a safe place. They can be vulnerable. They can be transparent so they can really get the help they need by removing these stigmas and stereotypes and biases that we have on mental health. So you know, so I just took all the information, start combining them. So what I'll do is do my other thing about self-reflection for correction, because I, I realize this as well. If you don't if you don't allow God to correct you, you won't mature. You will not grow. You won't mature at all. That's what happened to King Saul. Saul didn't allow correction. So God said, I can't use you. David allowed correction and God used him. It was not that David was, quote, a perfect person, but God, he allowed God to correct him in his state. And so that's when God was able to use him. You could see that consistently when God couldn't correct someone, he stopped their leadership. He stopped moving forward. Moses, he couldn't correct him. He stopped him. You got to see the consistency of God in correction. So um, those are some of the things I took away from it. I mean, I got so many more notes. I mean, I go, go back and look at it, you know, just... I kind of like the two minute hourglass I got flipping up and down. So I gave myself two minutes. Thank All right. You, sir. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. The question on the table and Reggie, I, I need you to come here and unmute Devin. Brother Lord, come on now. 
uh, the the moment that what we're doing, Devin, is taking a moment to just uh, do what, exactly what Dr. Dent did and say it, the reflection. Was there a standout moment or was there a uh, something that was so pivotal and, and impactful that you remember? Um, and something that you might want to share, or even in this moment as we get ready to go into uh, the new year, I'll kind of segue until I see somebody's hand or you unmute. Reggie, there you go. I see you. I think the biggest thing for me as we prepare is that I need preparation. Going into next year, I need to have a strategy, and then I need to have uh, all my tactics of how I want to accomplish everything from a month to month. I need to be able to track this. You know, I think in the, in the past years, I have not done the best job of making sure because the plan had gone forth, but I didn't follow uh, the, the tactics for me to get the accomplishment that I'm looking for. Um, one of those things is I, I still plan to be an author. Dr. Mack has been in my butt about making sure I get that first book. And literally um, on my wall over here, I got three books, you know, the concepts and precepts for the three books I got. And I'm this close on one, this for another. And so I need to be able to finish it. And uh, I think part of what I'm bringing forward is uh, the plan. You know, we're going to go out and literally I'm going to say this is, has to be accomplished. I'm putting a timeline on it and then I need to do it because the progression has to be there. I have a bunch of people that um, God has blessed me with to be a leadership in in a pastoral position. And even as the shepherds get ready to, to you know, just can't talk about it, I got to be about it. You know, we talk about lifestyle evangelism. And if I didn't say a word and they base it off what they seen and not they, what they hear, Am I being everything I'm supposed to be? And at this particular point, I don't feel the accomplishment is there. So I'm doubling down on discipline. So discipline is my operative word for this one, is that everybody know when you when you thick, right, and you're trying to lose some weight, you need to have some discipline. You know what to do. It ain't no, it ain't no, it ain't no secret. I got to, I got to stop eating. And so what's my discipline? The thing I need more of is discipline. J Mac, I see you got your hand up. Yes, sir. It's funny that you mentioned the word discipline, because this morning in my 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 quiet time, the Lord talked to me about just that the, the discipline your desires. And as I'm looking back on on uh, 2023, there was just a it's the options that became available as uh, as God's began blessing me more and more with my business and, and different endeavors, I realized that I had more options. And I began to pray that he would give me the discipline to be able to discipline my desires because those options uh, are what I think that the whole crux of the National Men's Prayer Call is all about. We have these options. Some of them are not necessarily the best way forward for us reaching the target that we've said and that God has placed for us. So how do we have the discipline to be able to say no to what we have the ability to be able to say yes to? So I, uh, I think that those four core values, we have just kept them top of mind and, and helped um, individuals, help uh, men to just be able to look transparently at themselves and say, am I being mature? Like uh, Pastor Raphael was just saying, am I, have I grown to this level? Um, am I, is my, are my decisions in such a way that I'm, I'm pleased and they're leading to correct outcome and results? Um, am I consistently doing this? You know, often uh, we get up and uh, we do one thing, we pay child support one time, or we take out the trash one time, and we think that we done done something. It's the consistency, the pattern, when they look at you, as he was talking about in the lifestyle evangelism concept, that's what is, is so important. And this month, as we talked about strength, I think that throughout the entire year, what, is, what has been in my spirit? is that the consistency that the National Men's Prayer Call brings top of mind to men that will give them the, the strength and the ability to be able to say, yes, I can, but that's not the best use or the best uh, iteration of my time, so I want to do better. So I'm going to come back every Tuesday and Thursday morning and just have the that like-minded mindset to be able to, to be in the proximity of praying brothers and brothers that are in front of positive, spiritually enhanced personal development 
That's what the power of the National Men's Prayer Call is. And I'm just excited to be a part of it. And with that, I yield my time. Amen. I love that. Discipline my desires. That's good because every every uh, good thing ain't, ain't a God thing. I got you. Uh, before I come to you, Brother Lloyd, I know Reggie has un, unmuted his song. I wanted to see if I could go to Brother Tenor. Uh, yeah, that was great, uh, what you were saying. And thank you for this concept, too, uh, Pastor Raphael. Um, there's so many different things. I don't even know where to begin. But one thing I do have pinned here is from August the 8th, 2023, Dr. Charles Dent, uh, Cultivating Mental Resiliency. He laid out some really, one, you know, really nice things, uh, stating that, uh, I put down the strength of our faith and uh, it was five things that he broke down was knowing God, do I believe in him? Do I trust in him? Do I obey him? And do I honor him? And that was something that I had uh, made notes of and I kept it and I just kind of reflect and go over that quite a bit. Uh, but, um, that really meant a lot. And that's been what, what five or six months ago when Dr. Charles Dent spoke uh, regarding that uh, couple of days. And also, I really enjoyed that from the standpoint of uh, Brother Tommy Jones when he was on. He laid some, had some great nuggets, you know, and he, he, he was stating that um, leaders, leaders eat last. And I, I made a note of that. And I thought, you know what? That's so true. You know, and he stated also that we become slaves once the words leaves out of our mouth. Uh, yeah, and he made a slave great to point. Your word. Yes, sir. Yeah. And he, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said something also. And I thought, wow. He said, the uh, Harley Davidson said, hold your own pen when you're writing your story. And I thought, man, that's serious there, you know. Yeah. And uh, also, he stated success will always leave clues. Uh, that was really profound as well. And uh, also, uh, the last but not least, our own brother Johnny Mack, back in August the 21st, 2023, Fortifying Minds, Cultivating Mental Resiliency. Dr. Johnny Mack uh, stated that taking your words will take you to another level because your word is your seed. The seed is your word. And Johnny Mac, I made a note of that. And he, he highlighted that, but uh, it was just so many great. I mean, it's like, like Johnny was saying, it. you know, I, I come on this, uh, you know, because it helps me to basically stay in tune with God's word to be able to get on this call with great people like, you know, everyone that we have in our circle here. And, you know, it's not a good, I tell people all the time, this is not a good old boys club. That's not what this is about. It's about us praising God and thanking God and, and helping us grow. And I've grown tremendously. This has been one of my best years ever. And, you know, I'm in the retail business. So this is nothing but the grace of God. I'm grateful for that because it's just being obedient, but um, I just really enjoy it. I don't get up at 5.30, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning just to be getting up. So I, I really get a lot out of this National Men's Prayer Call. So I'm grateful to be a part of it. Amen. Yep. Great recap, Doc. Mm -hmm. And Brother Lord, I'm coming to you, sir. I see your hand up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, and God bless everyone on this call. And the most impactful thing about this for me has been come into a space with some powerful, intelligent African-American men who love the Lord, you know, and, and sharing information with each other to strengthen each other. It's not a competition. You know, it, it's not that we compete with each other, but we complete each other. And that's the sense that I've got from this uh, call. Just a couple of nuggets I got over the time. I think one of the things that Dr. Dent talked was about the remote control you know, that we got the remote in our hand and we got all of these buttons at our disposal. We can stop and pause and think and rewind and, and, and do all of those things we need to do in our lives. We can just use that 
that model of the remote control. And, and one of the things I heard Bandit say was that my, my emotions don't have an intellect. You know, I'm emotional, I'm, I'm not intellectual, I'm just emotional. And those are just some of the nuggets that I've taken from some of the brothers. Over. And there's so much more stuff that's been said that I wrote a lot of notes as I've been coming here on this time. But um, just those things that really was driven home to me as a leader, as a pastor, you know, own it, confess it, repent, be quick. Uh, the empowerment of the Holy Ghost also comes with the conviction of the Holy Ghost as well. I just can't have the empowerment, I have the conviction and, and things like that that's been said over these calls, you know, and, and sometimes I could be right, but I'm looking at it wrong. You know, little nuggets like that that I can take and apply to my life and each and every day, you know, always checking myself and, and go back and look in the mirror and, and, and seeing what, what I need to improve. And that's one of the things that you brought that encouraged me to, to improve myself, you know, to be the best version of me that I can be, you know, and, and I get that when I see um, see brothers on the line. It's just encouraging me. And, and I remember when I first came out, I like Peter and John at the moment, it was transfiguration. Oh, it is good for me to be here. <laughs> you know what I mean? But thank God for, for the uh for the encouragement and inspiration. And there is the, the brothers with the with the beards, you know, and the bearded brothers, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's always encouraging and just those little nuggets, man, and then sometimes it may seem insignificant, but they have a great impact. So thank you, brothers, for allowing me to be a part. Amen. Amen. Yeah, this is like workout. You know what I mean? If you don't get in and, and get your workout during the week and um, it, it helps keep fueling us through the uh, the week. And for me in particular, because you can get so distracted. I think this has been a year of major distractions. And and when you get pulled off your agenda, or even pull your morning off, you know, uh, things are waiting on me. As soon as I wake up in the morning, I've got three, four texts already in and pulling me in so many different directions that pull me away from God. But even uh, my idea of being a man of God, you know, I can fall into being a man if somebody get a little slick and then I'm going down this, this really kind of centers me, you know, and um, and sets me in the right direction. I think that's uh, that we're always bettered. Well, I'm always bettered, especially when I'm I'm connecting with my brothers who remind me of of uh, who I am and my kingdom agenda. You know, just not the my own kingdom. I see we got brother Timothy ready to talk to me. I know we got a few minutes left, and Tim, but we will. It'll be a great for you to close us out on this. What you got for me, brother? Okay, my um. Call out for 2000, 2024 be, be a year for me, uh, for my generation, for me. For, you know, I'm serving the ministry, doing a lot of church international here in Jackson, Mississippi. My pastor, Mr. Carter Cruz Sr., started digging ministry in Neuroaster because it helped me to serve the community by feed people, close people around here, around in the Hass County in Jackson, Mississippi. And this is my, I've been, been part of me, part of Mr. Ms. Kirk for the last three years. I enjoy the method. All the speakers, like the uh, Pastor Matt, all the all the, the brothers, folks, they helped me inspire me to, to get involved and help out with the brother I Shepherd I because you know this, this message helped me as a lot of things about serving ministry, and that's my time. All right, sir. I think again, iron sharpens iron, right? And then, uh, but it also keeps the fire stoked to make sure that we're still uh, going in the direction that God has us to be. And I think all of it, at the end of the day, is an honored sacrifice. Is that even we partition these first fruits of our days on Tuesdays and Thursdays and be prepared for it, gentlemen? I applaud you all on it, and I encourage even more gentlemen that are out there. You know, to take that step forward, there's capacity within the organization for uh, leadership and people and participation. And uh, even though that we might be some uh, steadfast people that you see on it uh, from time to time and all on a consistent basis, is that we still have opportunity for other people to step up. This is about leadership, and part of what proper leadership is is preparing the next generation to move the organization forward. There. Uh, 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 skill sets that are still needed within the organization to keep making us more effective. And so I encourage every man to, even for the people that are participating now, that there's another level that we can uh, go with it, even from, even if it's from uh, participation through finances or from talent, 
And uh, so we need to. We want to do uh, even bigger things. God is calling us to a higher standard on it. And then we're going to set the tone for it. And we're going to meet it. So, gentlemen, I appreciate you sowing seeds in my life personally. Uh, I've gathered some great information from each of you. And I participate y'all being vulnerable enough to, to do that. You know, and uh, I thank y'all because y'all uh, help mold me into the man that I have become. And so it's important. And I thank y'all for that. I thank you for the brotherhood on that. I thank you for God chasing me in some cases, right? God chastens the ones he loves, right? And so sometimes I need my brothers to come on and say, you know, because Benny ain't got no hesitation, say it, you wrong. I'm like, oh, here I go again, right? So we need that. But I also got him telling me what I'm doing right. And so without that, we can put ourselves on an island that, that takes us in a useless space for the kingdom. So we always want to be connected and tethered to good brothers that help us uh, stay right. With that being said, gentlemen, we're going to get ready. I will see you guys in the new year. Are we on Tuesday, Mac? We are? Okay, we're going to start this year off. And I think if you don't mind, I'm gonna come up with. Um, I feel inspired for the for this next theme for for January. We're gonna talk about how we strengthen um, disciplines, and we're gonna undergird ourselves with the very thing that God has called us to be disciples. Y'all know how I feel about that. Uh, you know, don't sell me out and just being a believer. We've been called to be disciples, Ooh. and the core of discipleship is discipline. Those areas where we are not excelling in is only because we have not applied the right discipline. I'm going to pull that in our, uh, in our ministry as well for the harvest, and we're going to keep on going. So um, we'll start that out. Perfect. Everybody line up. I think mm. that's perfect, Pastor. I think that's perfect. I'm that's taking all the credit, Dr. Dent. Hey, <laughs> hey God, God did drop this on my, on my spirit. Uh, Gentlemen, God put something in my spirit I wanted to share with you. I was thinking about it uh, as we were talking, saying you can pray us out on this word right here. You know, point, you know, we were talking about what the agenda of the ministry is, and that's, uh, you know, the outcome is for us to help men uh, be impactful in their lives. I like Johnny Mac uses that phrase often, is to be and have an impact uh, in, in, in the kingdom and, and just address what people are looking for. Everybody today is looking for some form of fulfillment, and you really find fulfillment uh, when you know you're operating in your purpose. And so what's 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 that what's that ingredients for purpose? Uh, to me, the three ingredients for purpose is uh, working is, is creation, creativity, connection and contribution. If you're operating in your creative space. You're making sure that it, and, and, and what God gave you, making sure you use that as a contribution to uh, help others then at that point, you'll find the most fulfillment. So creation, creativity, connection, and contribution. When you are operating in that space, at that point, in my opinion, you have full fulfillment. You are operating in your purpose. Amen. So let's close this out. Heavenly Father, we bow before you with a very simple request, Father, that we maximize our purpose within your kingdom, Father. We ask that you empower us, Father, let the universe respond and give us everything that we need so that we can be creative, Father, that you can build a connection through us, and Father, that our contribution gives you glory. So we thank you for trusting us enough to be voice pieces for your kingdom, Father, that we can be example and men of God that people look to to be reminded that you do exist. We love you, we honor you, Father, and now we serve you. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen.